guys have been boxed in since yesterday evening. Just give them a touch of smoke. A lot of people over smoke bees. It doesn't take a whole lot. Yeah. So we can set this up here and make it easier on us. Hear the roar from here. So, are those them right now, or did uh, those this, get attracted? This is probably a, a hitchhiker that maybe was hanging on the outside because it, it's got these vents and they could probably smell everybody but couldn't figure out how to get in. Here they come. I like working bees barehanded. Yeah. A lot of people don't. You do occasionally get stung. Usually when I get stung, it's like I'm picking up a frame and I'll squeeze one by accident. But you can be so much more gentle with your bare fingers than you can with gloves on. Yeah. And this is a perfect time of year to try that if you, when you do your bee uh, yeah. inspections. Um, sometimes, you know, so in the middle of summer during that dirt and fall, I'll completely suit up too, you know. So here we've got a food frame. I just see, what did I just tell you? <laughs> did they sting you? Well, I squeezed it and yeah, but that's all. Yeah. Um, nectar frame. Okay. So we're gonna start them off with a little food so that they're not immediately thrown out thrown out into the wild trying to find it. They don't know where they are. Um, you can see some pollen. Let's see. So I thought, see these pollen cells? Yeah. And down here. So, um, and when they mix it with honey and some enzymes, it ferments. And they call that bee bread. And that's what they feed the babies, basically. So do they put that nectar in there themselves? Mm-hmm. Okay. It's their food storage, huh? Yeah, exactly. So what we'll do is put these in in the same order that they came out, like I moved them out yesterday, and that way they're they're organized the way they know, you know, we don't want to mix them up too bad today. Down the road, here's a, some advice. And of course, we're using medium frames in a deep box. They're going to build burr comb underneath, but that's not really a bad thing. And over the course of a couple of years, you can begin to move these to the outside and then replace them with your extra frames. But for now, it's it's not a problem. You'll still be able to pull these out. Yeah. Okay, I see some more pollen on this frame. It's a heavy food frame. Oh, this is a larva side here. Um, so down in here is where there's some very, very young, like three day old larva in the bottom of that. I should be pay paying more attention. Let's see if we can spot the queen as we move everything over. Kind of stuck that first one in without giving it a good look over. Okay, there's a drone. You see how much bigger he is? Yeah. They, they kind of stand out. And a lot of times when people are looking for a queen, they'll spot those drones because they, they are a lot larger. But when we see the queen, you'll have a better idea. You see how sticky and gummy that they, you see how they've glued together right here? Yeah. That's propolis. You, you know what that is, right? Um, they, no. They go around to like cedars and 
pines and they get sticky sap. Okay. And they bring it back. And that's how they'll seal these boxes. So eventually when you go to pull this box off, you have to stick your hive tool in here and go pop and break the seal because they'll, they'll go right around that crack because that way they can control the ventilation and all that. Yeah. So it's a very natural thing. And that's just how they, it's antibacterial. The Greeks discovered it is the first antibacterial, antifungal type thing. They used it like medicine back then. So here we've got a mixed frame. We've got some cap brood and some really young stuff down in here. I'm trying to see if I spot the queen on this side. And then here we've got capped brood. And we've got a, a nice solid pattern here. The only, only ones that she hadn't laid in are ones that they put nectar in and she can't lay in those. And that's a good sign. Yeah. Oh, let me point this out. This is a queen cup. You see this bee's got its head yeah. stuck in there because it's facing down, right? Um, queen cups are normal year round. It's nothing to worry about. But in the spring, let's say this hive had been here a year and they want to swarm and make a new queen, this is where they'll make this. This is where she'll lay an egg and this thing will grow down and it'll hang off the bottom and look about like a peanut hanging off the bottom. And that's what a queen cell is. And when you, whenever you see a queen cell, if you don't remove it, then they're they're going to swarm and take you know a, a part of the colony with them. But queen cups are very normal. That's nothing to be alarmed at. They like to have them. It's only when they're being used that you got to be aware that they're getting ready to swarm. But you could stop it by destroying that queen cell. Yeah. Oh wow, I wish I could have shown you that. Did, did, when I pulled it apart, did you see how they were kind of hanging together? Uh, uh, I think a little bit, yeah. Uh, that's called festooning. And when okay. they do that, they're making white. That's how they make white. Okay. It's pretty neat to watch. It's almost like paper dolls, the way their little legs are hanging together and stuff. Yeah. And I guess when they stretch out like that, it opens up these wax glands for these wax plates to come out of their abdomen. Interesting. Okay, here's some, you see the white larva, there's some white larva down here. Yeah, so, and the, yeah, they're, they're kind of all on top of it, but there's, this is like the, uh, so a worker egg is an egg for three days, a larva for six days, and then they cap it like this, it's capped. Mm -hmm. And that'll be capped for 12 days and then it emerges as an adult. So those white larvae are between the egg and the pupa stage. And, um, what, what you always want to look for in those, um, you see how pearly white, I don't know how well you can see these in here. You see how pearly white they are? Yeah. Yeah, white is the color you want for the larva. If you ever see off-color larva, that's a sign that there's disease. So pearly white is what you want. Yeah. That looks pretty good. Yeah, there's a bunch, there's a whole bunch like in this section right here. The sun is a better angle for me than it is you, but there's a bunch of larva right in there. If you can see. Yeah, I can see the, mm -hmm. with my sunglasses on where it blocks the glare, I can definitely see Oh, I see got it. you, cool, okay. Yeah. That polarized effect. Yeah, <laughs> nice. Let's see if I see her on here. I, I I absolutely made sure that the queen was in here last night. So um, she's got to be in here somewhere. Now, would they be huddled around her? Or? No, a lot of people think think that you know that they'd be all balled up on her typically she's free to walk and it's almost like as she walks the water's part sort of you know 
Yeah. And um, they, they love to hang around her. They, they're constantly licking her and cleaning her and all of that. So that larvae in there, is that just the same thing that we were looking at on the other yeah. side, just a different so, spot? So I think I may have slightly damaged that one, but these yeah. are just getting ready to be capped. In fact, that one's in the process of being capped right now. Okay. Oh, here's another thing to point out. Do you see how these point out like a bullet? Like yeah. Tip? Those are drones. Okay. So workers are flat like that. These are all worker in here that are capped. Yeah. And then these are drones that are poking out. So that tells you know what they are. Okay. Uh-huh. And I'm not seeing her on this frame. Bet your buck she was on that first one that I dropped in there and didn't check. We're gonna see that. Did it again. I told you that's about the only time I did it. Oh, this one's loaded with nectar. See, they're already working it, man, so. Um, they're they're gonna need this room. They're gonna build out fast when they've got this much they they can use this It takes eight pounds of honey to make one pound of wax So they'll use this nectar to pull out wax on all these cones Typically the queen doesn't like to go out on the food frames like this But you just never know when she's stuck in a little bitty box like this. There's no guarantees where she, where she is. I might have to get my reading glasses. Whenever I do an inspection, I'll always pull up one frame so that I can slide my frames over and then out, right? Because you don't want to just go right in the middle and pull one up or you can roll the queen and damage your legs. Yeah. That type of thing. Let me see here. Let me get my glasses. I don't see her on the wall. I was thinking it's possible she was on the wall in here, but she's not. What we got with this one? Let me see. There she goes again. See, she's got, she's got this little passageway in the bottom. There she is. She's, <laughs> she's not co op. She's not very. I see. She's. Wait. Oh, hang on. Is that her? She's, she keeps ducking into this little crevice. There she is, right there. Yeah. You that's... see that long abdomen and you see the shiny thorax? So, yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah, I just. See I... how black that thorax See, that's where you would put a paint dot when they mark it and. Honestly, I wish I had brought my paints. I would have marked her for you. But just, she doesn't, she looks just like her babies, doesn't she? Yeah. <laughs> She's got a longer abdomen. It's a very young queen, so. I'll leave this up and let those stragglers come out. So we can go ahead and let's close this one up before we open the other one. Okay. Now there's, they do have the little plastic things that go on the top of those. Should we have that on there or um, is that? No, that's all right. This, this is really just for ventilation. Yeah. And most of the, this is the, typically they've got a notch cut out right here which allows air to free flow, but it's all right. And it's not uncommon when you pop the top off to see some bees walking around up here, you know, they're just... But... Yeah. All right.
And how important is it that the lids are on tight? Because right now, I guess those are in the way, so I oh, no, I'd I'll, screw those. I wouldn't worry about it. All right. I, I don't have any latches on any of my stuff, so. Yeah. Right. Well, I meant like it, this latch is keeping it from going down. Should I take those off? Oh, oh, I got you. You know, they, uh, what, what had me concerned was there wasn't a notch on that thing. So this is going to allow some ventilation. I think I'd leave it like that. All right. You, you want them to be able to get free. You want air to flow through that way. Yeah. They can climate control and do their thing, you know. This is a live one. That'll be my, my be beginner mistake that actually pays off. Right? <laughs> there you go. So, hey. This whole thing is nothing but a learning experience. Uh, anybody that tells you they've got bees figured out is lying to themselves. <laughs> no, that's capped honey. That's what capped honey looks like. You, if you're curious, we can get it. You want to taste it? You sure. All right. We can just kind of in here like that. Just grab the finger cooler. Ah, well, I got this on. <laughs> oh, oh, that's right. <laughs> I didn't think about that. I did, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh no, you're fine. I didn't even. You got me all excited for I some honey. I didn't even stop and think about that. <laughs> oh, oh, do you see how they're hanging this fur comb off the bottom? Yeah, that's what they're going to do in these deep frames. So that's very normal, and that's how it's going to look when you pull it out. This, I'd like to spot. Big Mama on the way in on this time if we can. See, these are different colors of pollen. Oh, this is a good example. I see one in here. Where was it? Where they were? Oh, right here. You see, they're mixing two different colors of pollen. It's orange and yellow. So they will mix different pollens into one cell, but they will never mix nectar. So if it's clover, then clover goes into clover cell. If it's yeah. Apple, it goes in the apple cell, isn't that interesting? But they, they'll mix pollens together. Mm -hmm. All right, let's just make sure she's not, oh, I see a lot of, okay, now that there's no, ooh, there's no bees on here, you can see the really young larvae that are C-shaped larvae. You see them floating in royal jelly down there? Yeah. Yeah, so that's, they just hatched from eggs. Thankfully, these bees weren't all over them like the other frame to where you can see down in there. Yeah. Right. One more check. So don't have to go through again. Now when they swarm, do they normally swarm very far or is it kind of like... That's a, that's a great question. So tip, there's two stages to a swarm. When they first come out, they'll go somewhere within a hundred yards. Typically, if they came out, they might just go boom and hang in that little apple tree. And they'll cluster in a big ball and just sort of hang. And uh, at that point, the scouts go out and that's when they make their final decision where everybody's gonna go. So usually they'll hang like that. They can hang up to a day or two sometimes. Okay. And before they decide where they're going. So when you catch them hanging like that, they're very easy to catch. They're very gentle. And um, if you were to spot that and you had an empty hive ready, you can just shake the limb and they fall into it. And, and a lot of times, uh, that's all it takes to capture a swarm. I also put some swarm traps around to try to catch swarms. Sometimes you might get wild bees or sometimes you might catch one of your own swarms, you know. Um, and there's all kinds of plans and stuff on the internet. But it, all it is is just mimics a beehive is all it is. And, um, I see lots of cat brood. I see brood of all stages on this one. I think she might be hanging around a frame like this. The queen likes to hang around on brood frames. She doesn't normally go out on food frames, but when they're when they're just stuck in a little box like this, sometimes she'll go wherever she wants.
Everybody's calm now, aren't they? Yeah. All right. I'm not seeing there on this one. All right. This hive seems to have more cap brood than the last one. But it's funny how they go. Uh, one hive will be strong and three months later, like one may be stronger now and three months later the other one. Will. That's the great thing about having two. You got something to compare. There's some really good look at those larvae and how nice and white and shiny they look. That's what you want to see. Anytime you look in there and they look brown or any kind of off color, then that's bad news. Yeah. I'm not seeing her on here, man. Let's see. Oh, oh, there she is. You spot her? Um, right there. There you go. Yep. Yep, good eye. See how she's, that's why sometimes you can't see her because she's sticking her head down. Oh, there she's laying an egg. Check that out. Yeah, she's laying an egg. And you see those bees circling around her? Yeah. That's called the retinue. And those bees take turns. Um, they just basically are her little maid servants. Yeah, she's looking for an empty cell to drop an egg in. There she see she'll stick her head in there, she sees an egg, she moves on. <laughs> Alright, we're gonna be extra gentle with that one. Cool. Yeah, this one's got a lot of cat brood. Well, I almost wish I could trade one of those frames with the one over there. And you can. That's a food frame, I can tell by the weight. Yeah, lots of bee bread and cat honey. on that Not pretty smooth now I was thinking about putting a small bird bath over here somewhere with some water in it. Is that helpful to them? Or? Oh, they absolutely need a regular source of water. They can yeah. drink gallons on a summer day. They really can. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, a bird bath is great or, or I've got like a an old cat cattle trough that is flipped over and it has those ridges and stuff. I just fill that up every day and they got somewhere to land. Or you could have like a wash tub or something. Yeah. And maybe throw one of those pool noodles in or something that floats, you know? Yeah. And, and, uh, cause water is huge for them to cool it in the, in the, in the summer. And they also need water to, uh, they need water. Oh, where? See, that's why I bought this thing. It's cause I always set this thing. <laughs> <laughs> somewhere. Uh, they, they need water. They can't even eat honey really straight out of the cell. They have to dilute it. Yeah. So they use water year round. And a lot of times in the winter, um, when they're all clustered up in here and the heat rises, there's condensation on the top and that's their water source in the dead of winter. So. Gotcha. Yeah, water's a big deal. Most people don't weigh that in. Yeah, this is a nice solid hive, man. You'll be happy with that. Yeah. 
thought they were pretty cool when I found them, so. Wasp is back. Oh, let's see if I can. Will the wasps cause a problem for the hive? Not typically, not when there are this many bees. Yeah. Um, wasps are car carnivores. Um, I had problems with yellow jackets last fall for the first time ever, and they, they were tough, man. They can put a hurting on a hive if it's not strong. And that's when you would want to put that entrance reducer back on, you know? Yeah. Um, it, it allows them to protect it. Well, should I take the entrance reducer off of that one, or do you think it's okay right now? Um, it, that's really your call. I think uh, as it's starting to get hotter and all, it might be a good idea. See, th these two bees, one of the bees from the other hive <laughs> went in the wrong hive. Did you see that, that guard bee wrestle it out? <laughs> yeah. Said, so, heck no. Yeah, it's like, no, you don't belong here. I think I had put that one in and then on the other one I decided just not to do anything because I wasn't sure if that's what I was supposed to do or not. Now they've... Alright. Now there's more at the door of that one than yeah, this one. Yeah, maybe it's because well, they've been in less time. And what they're doing, um, here's a perfect example. You see that bee's butt is in the air? Yeah. You see how they're putting their butt in the air? Mm -hmm. And that little tan spot right on the tip, at, right before the stinger, that tan spot, mm -hmm. is called a Nazanoff gland. And if you could... If you could really get down there, you could smell a uh, lemongrass oil scent, which is what, that's the homing scent. They're, they're saying, oh, we see this is a perfect example right here. They're all doing it here. And uh, what they're doing, this is the homing scent. They're trying to tell these bees that are out here, hey, here we are. There's a good view of a nice enough clan right there. And they fan their wings to send the scent out here. And these, these bees that we just released are now going to smell that and head in. <laughs> they won't be just a few minutes doing this. They'll find a way in. It's interesting. And, and uh, I did see a lot more cat brood in this second hive. I'm not gonna tell you what to do, but if this was me, I think I'd move one of those frames into this one and let's beef this one up a notch. We could do that. If, if, since I'm here and we got everything, let's just do it. Yeah. So when we do this, um, you, you have to shake the bees off before you put it in the other hive? That's right, because yeah. I certainly don't want that queen going into here. They'd kill her. Not to mention, we, will, we want a queen per hive. We don't want to play games with that. Yeah. So, breaking my own move. This thing to do is just take long enough to get your room to do all your sliding so you're not rolling. Find one that's a little bit weak. See, this is a perfect one to swap out. Let me just make sure Big Mama got on here. We don't want to, and I'm, I don't want to shake her too hard either. You know, she's. Fragile, but you don't want to end. You don't want to end with a leg or something. I call it leg. Yeah. And uh, okay. 
pick one of these. I think we spotted her on that second frame. Now I'm gonna go on down to here. Oops. Oh, this this would be a great one to give them. That'll really help even it out. Now that's um, larva cells, right? Yeah, that, worker that cells. is capped worker brood, yep. And this is what they call open brood. And it's pretty cool that you can see the progression of how big these are moving out. They get smaller and smaller, which means that these were laid last. You know what I'm saying? So, mm -hmm. um, yeah. I'd like to show you an egg. They're so hard to see. It's like a little bitty piece of rice standing on its end. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Yeah, let's see if I can spot one. Just Typically when you go in to check your hive, if you want to make sure you got a laying queen, when you're seeing, young open brood like this that's really all you need to know because she's been she's laid in the last week you know what i'm saying that's really all you're trying to convince yourself that you got a laying queen some people really like to see her every single time but it's not necessary unless you just mm -hmm. like all right she's not on here so. And you see these cells that come out further down here, those are drones, yeah. drone larvae. And um, so here's a pretty cool fact that drones are unfertilized eggs. Did you know that? So a drone has no father, but it has a grandfather. <laughs> isn't, that, isn't that wild? That's weird. <laughs> It's pretty wild that, that an unfertilized egg turns into a living creature, though, isn't it? You know, yeah. It's not a lot of... Oh, wow. Okay, do you see how they're holding hands? Oh, yeah. Okay, that's called festooning. And when they're... Fe see, they're already trying to make wax to put on this empty foundation here. So when, when they hold hands like that, they're, they're basically trying to excrete some wax pellets. Pretty wild. Awesome. That went about as good as it could. You got any questions or anything? This doesn't look like it's there. No. no. I'm gonna leave you my card. Yeah. And I and I, I don't want you to hesitate if you if you you see something you don't understand or you want to ask me something, you can snap a picture and text me or whatever you know and. Uh, I'll be glad to try to talk you through um, anything. Because um, this first year, dude, is a real learning experience. You gotta, you know, there's a lot to. <laughs> yeah. So don't get down on yourself if if, uh, if there's some struggles this year, but but just learn from whatever happens and, and they're, they're pretty resilient this time of year so everybody should bounce back pretty good right now and um, sometime in the middle of this summer I'm going to recommend you do some type of mite treatment uh, and I can, give, I can give you a list of the organic treatments that I use yeah I just kind of stuck this in the center of the two you know what um, if they want it they'll drink it down and uh, typically when there's real nectar available, they don't want our sugar water. Yeah. But these bees are so new and they don't know where they are, they may just suck that thing down tonight. You know? So yeah. you're, you're not hurting a thing by leaving that out. Yeah. But typically when they've got real nectar, they way rather have that. Yeah, I don't blame them. 
<laughs> I don't need it. It's like me wanting real food too.